Hello, hello, everybody. This is another day of Coffee and Critique, and we will have Stacy joining in the room soon. Uh, hope everybody is having a great day. Uh, I know I am. Hey, how's it going, Steve? Welcome back. Welcome back. We're going to be doing this pretty much all week until Thursday. Thursday is like the last day. Uh, we're going to be rocking. We have a stylist and art producer. Hey, how's it going, Stacey? Hold on. Get you in the room. Just waiting on IG, actually, you know, working. Hey, hello, hello. Hello, hello. How's it going? It's going great. How are you? How is your quarantine? Same uh, thing. Yeah, it's it's been going well. I've been uh I've been painting to keep my you know passing up the time and whatnot. It's just I just feel like um I think I've been ready for this since I've been such an introvert. You know, since yeah. my younger days. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I realized I'm an extrovert. I'm like super extrovert. But I realized that maybe, you know, I'm switching sides. Switching <laughs> sides, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. What you been up to today? Um, actually, you know, just um, ran some errands at my house. <laughs> then, <laughs> didn't get out, and then uh, I had a voice lesson uh, with my amazing uh, voice teacher. Yeah, because. My background is that I'm a musical theater actress, oh, and sweet. Um, so I'm still, you know, trying to keep it. Um, I know I'm trying to stay in the game. Uh, <laughs> so I had a voice lesson and cooked some some lunch, and uh, yeah, just just chilling, I guess. That's awesome. So I know that you are a an amazing stylist, um, Aww, as well as an you. art producer. Now, how do you yeah. how do you remain creative are you doing anything to kind of sharpen up your craft while everybody's like social distancing like what what are you what's your process right now uh, right now i'm definitely trying to stay creative and um um communicate with my friends and co-workers that are also in art and see what they're doing what they're up to and how we can solve basically that problem of staying um at home but still be in the process of creating art because right now i think social media is uh the most important thing for all of us right because yeah. everybody's at home all we do is just sit at home and click that button and <laughs> forward 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 swipe 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 <laughs> Yeah, so I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I, so I write. <laughs> yeah, because that's definitely a thing, and I know it's it's an issue for everybody, especially in fashion. There is a lot of there are a lot of designers who need uh, there is social media still going on, but uh, they don't have any access to any photographers or models or art producers because a lot of people sit at home. Yeah, but. You know, I know that there is a lot of magazines that also struggling because they need to publish something, right? They yeah. need <laughs> constant content. Uh, so I think it's actually our time. It is our time as artists and musicians and, uh, I don't know, photographers and models and um, everybody who is in art because I think art and love these two things are going to save the world and we should just keep going keep doing and um i think i got what everybody's scared of so uh and thank god it kind of went in a light way for me so um with antibodies i'm you know trying to stay on yeah stay at, at a distance uh but but still communicate with people and uh, we're doing some shoots. We're helping designers right now provide some content, produce some content so they can um, keep their website going, so they can keep their sales going. And uh, of course, in this hard time, it's difficult to do an editorial, but we're still trying. 
Yeah. And I had a great experience um, with my friend. She's an amazing photographer from Italy, uh, Stefano. And we did, a, you know, everybody's doing right now this website camera shoot. Yeah, they're doing the FaceTime shoots, which I, I did at least one, which is pretty cool. It was different, but yeah. I think that's another medium that, you know, other artists can use in the meantime, which, you know, yeah. gets, you know, branches you out to other, you know, talent around the yeah. world. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I agree with you, especially in Italy situation, you know, it's not the best. Yeah. And uh, people just trying to stay happy, I guess, and peaceful inside. And for artists, it's very important to have this kind of strength inside them so they can keep going is it's not easy for everybody. No. And especially for artists, I think art is underappreciated. So, you know, we need to do that. And it's great. It was a great experience. <laughs> we, you know, we haven't seen each other for a long time and we did that shoot and yes, it was not the best quality. I must agree because it was a FaceTime and, yeah. you know, the camera is bad. The like me, like the Wi-Fi is falling apart. <laughs> but it was still, you know, it just it was so nice. It was very nice. That's awesome. I I mean, it, it also makes you focus more on the emotion, uh, more so the quality. Because I'm sure you know, like, granted, he he wasn't there. You doing the the shoot? Like now it's like, all right, I could focus on more of the emotion to make to kind of overpower the quality of the actual image. You know. And it's like, all right, so yeah, yeah, it was taken there, but I could really still feel the emotion regardless. And it gives it like a intimate, like digital Polaroid kind of vibe, you know? Because a lot of people yeah, like Polaroids and those aren't the best, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they aren't the best. Yeah, yeah but Polaroid. What I want to know is how did you get started into becoming like a, a stylist? I've seen you, have you done, you know, done work like with Vogue and whatnot. So like, how did, how did those, like the connections like link up together? Uh, I'm very faithful. Uh, I really believe in something uh, that is up there, that is guiding us, that is um, bringing us what we need and not what we want. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay um but yeah i've been a musical actress since i was a baby i've been in art and um i came here with a musical theater education and i went to new york film academy and i finished two-year conservatory of musical theater you know i started playing in theater and going all these auditions it was so hard and in the meantime you realize that being in actor is really hard because especially if you're a foreign speaker it's really hard here yeah so i started working with um independent designers and flying solo okay i i hope you heard of them (laughs) it's uh, the biggest platform for independent designers uh they're really amazing and they bring designers from all over the world which is very interesting uh because some of them are really really small and they you know want they want at least to try to be in New York City and try to sell their products in New York. Because I think New York is the biggest platform for fashion and for literally oh, everything. Yeah. Hands down. <laughs> I win a, yeah, we, we in the right spot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, seeing all that, I started being interested in in fashion, in how to combine Things that I never noticed before, I guess, because my mom is in fashion. My mom, hands down, is just so great. My mom is amazing. I love my mom. And uh, she knows everything. Like, she sees these details that I, I guess I couldn't ever see, or I just didn't know how to see them more. I just was not interested for that. I just thought it was in my blood for some reason. And, you know, it's fine, it's fashion. There was one time when I said to my mom, Mom, you know what? I hate fashion. I hate stores. I hate all of that. She must have lost it. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. She was like, what? No. She was like, go watch this fashion. I was like, Mom, you know, I don't like that. And going to all of these stores, just like, this is so overwhelming. Yeah, I just... I just cannot stay there. There's so many people in this light. I'm starting to freaking out. I'm being anxious. I was like, okay, this is it. 
But then when you realize the process of making clothes, because I was very close with the designers and I was seeing them sewing all the, all the stuff in their hands, on their knees and how they were fixing it. And then I started helping the fashion shows for flying soul. And I realized how hard it is actually to be a designer and how hard it is to, with your vision, like everything else, right? To bring your vision to the world and being accepted. Yeah. And um, in Flying Solo right now, more than 100 designers, and each and one of them is so different and so amazing. And it, it's such a great job that they're doing. Regard, like, there is a lot of obstacles, right? Money, especially if you're an independent designer. It's, uh, it's very hard to find somebody who will believe in you. And I just realized that they're just like me. They're artists. They're actors. Like, they're, they're artists and they're also struggling. They're also trying, just like me sitting on this audition <laughs> from 7 a.m., you know? And it's, it's very, very interesting. And, in, uh, um, I guess I fell in love with the process because in every piece that they make, there is their heart, there is their vision, it's their beliefs, and yeah. So I realized I like that, and then uh, working with independent designers, I realized most of them are leaking, uh, lacking. Sorry, English term. <laughs> no, you good. You good. My mom, like, my mom most- is from another country too, so it took her a while to to learn the language. Oh. She came here when she was seven, so I like I get it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so they're lacking basically content because they doing what they love to do. They they producing all of their stuff. They are producing all of their clothes and jewelry, and then by the end of the day. People don't really see it because it's not on a website. It's not on Instagram or Instagram is not good enough, you know, to sell. And of course, because the first thing we see is how good it is, the quality of the website, the quality of the pictures, because we love with our eyes, especially a generation that is right now. Everything is about how you make it, how you make that video, how you retouch that picture, how you like put the colors, how the colors like nice to your eyes and everything. And I just realized that that will that what they need. And uh, right now, if you, if you want to do a production of a photo shoot, a really good photo shoot, it's an insane amount of money. It, it's really, it's a lot. A model and a photographer and a hairstylist and a makeup artist and a producer and a stylist and a studio and the food and everything. And I just realized they need somebody who's gonna help them for the less amount of money but still producing it with the same quality and doing the same quality of a product and trying to help them to sell and to go there in the world and tell everybody who they are so that's how I started uh putting my team together and uh, I'm blessed with a lot of amazing people and artists and photographers uh, and um, people who stick with me no matter what, no matter what they have. They know if I need them, if this job needs them, they go there because they also do it because they love it. And that's what brought us together. And that's um, why we do it. I guess. So That's awesome. (laughs) Now, my my next question is now basically since we're in this situation they don't know when exactly things are kind of like slow yeah. down or not have you have you created an, alto- an alternative approach to solve the the i guess the connection to like to making money cuz right now people are like oh how do i make money like do you feel like like i'm i've found something creative to help people link together and still work especially you know magazines are gonna be hurting movie productions have been pushed back like yeah so it's just like what do you feel is the a a better approach to kind of helping people kind of i guess be financially better in the in the current situation 
Well, I guess everything in this world is about support and connections and uh, not connections, I mean, like business connections, I guess more personal connections because we are in this together, the whole world in this together. It's not like it's just New York or it's just, I don't know, Italy or like something. We're all dealing with the same thing. And if we're still going to keep calm and pursue what we want to do, our goals, I think we can get the best out of it. And the most important thing is to be understandable, I think. And uh, just kind of let it go open your heart and accept everybody who is coming your way. Uh, Because there is a lot of People who've gone through a lot of difficult things and emotions through these few months. Yeah. You know, and um, I believe a lot of people meditated <laughs> on certain things. And a lot of people wrote something new in their lives. Uh, I really didn't create any concept or anything like that that can I like, okay, I'm improving my business. Okay, <laughs> this is it. That's what I'm doing. No way no it's not that's gonna happen because we don't know what's gonna be tomorrow but uh we just need to continue living and continue being true to our goals true to ourselves and um believing in better things i guess and better people yes that's the right way invest in better people yeah because you know not everybody deserves the right to connect in your life especially if they're a toxic person and that's always what I tell people. Like you gotta really be mindful who you bring inside your life because that sure. will, will show, um, you know, in the future. Like if today you have yeah. this, you know, these certain people in your life, are they good for your life or are they bad for your life? You know, you gotta exactly. really be mindful. You know, I think your future and your business, because your business is who you are, what you're creating is your brain, it's your creative side. Everything that you do in this world, it's who you are. And who you bring to your life is going to affect what you do in this life. Because do we want it or not, all people have, I think, some energy that kind of, it's either vibes with yours or not. So if you're with me, <laughs> please be please be good to everybody who surrounds me. If you're not with me, <laughs> Bye. I love- I, I love the energy. I love the energy. Now, yeah. um, I know you are in, you know, mus- musical theater and whatnot. Is how did you prepare for your roles? Um, because I know a lot of people who are in theater, and and sometimes the crowd gets to them. Uh, sometimes their co-stars get to them. Like, how do you kind of break through that and stay focused on like what? What's your process on kind of like really being prepared for your role? Ah. Uh. Oh, my role. Oh, sorry. I'm like, um, <laughs> my, my role. Uh, it's a, I guess for me, it's very personal because I studied in, uh, I'm from Russia originally. Uh, I'm from Moscow and, uh, I studied in Russian university, theater university is, uh, we all know that Russian school is the base the base of theater, I guess. Stanislavski is the father of um, theater. And um, I just have been uh, taught to, when you're preparing for your role, you're going into your character, you are leaving the life of the character, which is very dangerous because a lot of our, a lot of actors, you know, it's been hard for them to go through certain things because they were relieving certain things in their life, certain moments in their life over and over and over again. And sometimes your brain just shut down, your emotions just shut down. You cannot get out of this situation. It's very dangerous yeah. for a lot of people. Uh, but uh, I guess coming to New York Film Academy and uh, learning here certain moments, how to make it more simple for myself to go into the world, but still come home and feel like I'm safe feel like I'm not stuck, you know, in that character and feel like I'm actually okay <laughs> because 
is we know there is all this drama happening. That's why all the movies are interesting. That's why all the plays are interesting. And uh, but still, my old school is kind of brings me. I beg. I, I think it's like a muscle memory. You still go through your emotions. You break down your character. Um, you learn about your character. You create your character. You play with your character. Who you want to be. Maybe sometimes it's very interesting because when you're actually not yourself, you're not cared of that at all because you can create whatever you want and nobody <laughs> nobody <laughs> gonna judge you because it's not you okay and i think that's what i love about acting that you can be free because nobody gonna judge you because it's only a character wow but that's deep. <laughs> really but really it's whatever inside of me I bring it on stage because it's me, nobody else, you know. Okay. And whatever experience I have and I had in my life, I think that was what's coming through my character usually. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's, that's It's always awesome to hear other people's uh, perspective and how they kind of step into the the role and it's like you know like it depends on the role because obviously they read it and they see like all right this is a character that's really aggressive now what points of my life did i feel aggressive and how can i relive yeah. that moment and bring that to the stage <laughs> yeah but you know sometimes it's really scary because i know a few teachers i'm not gonna I'm not going to speak names, but uh, there was one man in my life. He was my teacher, and he's been through 9 11. Mm. He was helping to find the bodies and bring them, you know, to their families. It was a terrible picture. And he played in a few war movies and in theaters. He played in plays they were describing the war. And when they needed him, to bring out this quality of the memories. Every time, the first thing he was thinking is 9 11, because it was the closest one. It was the most terrible one, terrible experience in his life. But every time he was bringing it on, he, he couldn't help himself, but he started crying because it was too overwhelming. Because some things, even though they were a long time ago, they never actually. They never disappear mm -hmm. from your life. Your this thought never come down. They just still stand in your head like it was yesterday. So actually, if you're thinking about the roles and thinking about when I was angry last time, you got to think about the right moment because anger is always different. Yeah, it is. It's, it can be an anger with your family. It can be an anger with your friend. It can be an anger with somebody you love. And it's you just got to find the right anger. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, you know, I believe life. that I had yeah. to, my friend, because I don't, I used to act, but I don't act like, it was just more so like high school and the college, but it was just more so like someone asked me to act. So there was scenes that they were like, wow, like, like it was a scene where they put me like, oh, you found out your your girl just cheated on you. How do, how do you, you know, like this is, this is the role of your character. Little did they know, like that's like that was like a thing that was going on in my life. So it didn't, it wasn't really <laughs> difficult to kind of pull that emotion. So then when the camera started rolling, they saw my reaction and they were like, like wow, like like we <laughs> like like are you okay? Good. I was like, yeah, it was. They yeah, had to go because I had to pick which one. Like there's yeah. there's different versions on like how that breakup. It could have been like y'all mu mutually broke up, or you you found out that they yeah, did something exactly. behind your back. So and then there's like, all right, do yeah. you want the angry version of that? Like like how dare you, you know, do yeah, this unlawful thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you want like adult version of dealing with cheating? Exactly. Yeah. The adult I version of dealing with like which is I'll never forget a scene from Ozark. I don't know if you ever seen that show Ozark on Netflix. And I never did, but I'm about to see it. Yeah. You about to start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I won't I won't spoil anything, but there's a moment where a character is is kind of like is he finds out that person uh he was betrayed by this person and he didn't say or respond in the way that you wanted him to respond. 
And because he, it was a very delayed and very nullified, he didn't show no type of emotion. You're like, wow, I feel that. Because when you find yeah. out, you don't explode all the time, like right away. It kind of, yeah. it kind of like festers it, in your body. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You need to think it over. You like, it's a shock. Sometimes it's just a shock. So you need to, yeah, I think it's a few minutes, maybe sometimes even, or a few seconds to realize what actually happened. And did it really happen? You yeah. know, so it's yeah. It's but your body in stress, yeah, it's a it's, it's a process. It's an art process. <laughs> it's an art process. So when I film, because yeah. I film, I film uh, movies and whatnot. There was moments where I would hold on to a shot because I know it's you can't just kind of jump into the emotion that you're going into. Like it takes a minute to have a character cry. It takes a minute for a character to get angry, and I feel like those buildups is worth holding the frame and then having them just like lose it. You know, like you just got to hold that yeah. shot. Don't cut yet. And shout out to the people in the editing room because they actually saved a lot of major production. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you on that one. Yeah. It's just, That's it's just good. interesting how like, especially filming, seeing actors get into that space because I was like really close to a lot of actors and, just to see them, like, you know who they are, and then to see them go into their moment where they're crying, get angry, you're like, is this the same person? Like, it's completely... Yeah. It's like, they really yeah. go for it. And, this, and I have a lot of respect for the, the them, especially when they get back to, oh, was that good? And you're like, you just cried and threw yeah. a chair? Like, how did you just snap back so quick? How was that good? <laughs> <laughs> how was that not good? Like, I think yeah. we're done here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's do two more yeah. takes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, there was a moment in my life, uh, I was dating a guy. We're not going to speak names again. But <laughs> 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 I was dating a guy and there was a few things he told me. He was like, you know, I, I like you, but it's, I, it's different. You are, I don't know how to behave with you. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, First of all, you're Russian. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Automatic. Like, okay, all right. Second, you are an actress. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second. How's that different? How's that different from you being a guy in finance? <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> it's my job. But I guess people think that actors are always on acting in life yeah no first of all <laughs> well you know there is a lot of actors who actors who are actually yeah sacrificing their lives to be in a profession and be all in and um, they're sacrificing their personal relationship and being able to have a family for what they actually love yeah and that's that's really heartbreaking but yeah the it was that he called me an actress and he really believed for two and a half years that it's not me i'm just acting the whole thing i'm acting in the relationship and i'm like honey you know what being an actor is just like being in finance it's your job you do what you do and then you go home and you be you right yeah. being an actor doesn't mean that you're staying in a role all the time you are just more emotionally available for other people because you're just more open that way you know exactly. it's like your knowledge about mathematics is how to say higher yeah you're yeah i guess it's the same thing the knowledge about emotions is just bigger in actors i guess because we constantly training and it's like being a tennis player and constantly going and having, you know, their training sessions every day, where to step, where to, I don't know, where to hit the ball. The same thing with emotions. You know, in certain years, you want to cry, which moment you got to think of if you want to do, I don't know, if you want to laugh so hard if you're crying, you know the moment you better remember and you're going to do that. It's just, I guess, you're training your emotions to do what you need them to do for you. Does that make sense? No, that makes absolute sense. And I wish a lot of people understood that because me being, a, I, I'm a, also a photographer as well. And I usually say I am a, you know, uh, 
cinematographer, a director, and I just leave it at that. Because the moment I say I'm a photographer, oh, you must get on with all the models. How is that the first thing? I know. <laughs> it's not my work. It's just, oh, he's with all these models. And then it's funny because a lot of photographers are like, I wish that was true, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely well, a lie. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, certainly I believe that. Yes, being an, a model is pretty, and being a photographer, you know, it's a, it's a very tiny border to cross in professional world in order to get um, hit or bitten or whatever. Yeah, it's, 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 like a, it's like a dark world that no one really wants to talk about. And, and it's yeah. funny because my friend, she wants to do like a documentary on like how like the model world and the photography world, but like in the same world and whatnot. I'm like, there is a documentary. Oh, it's another one. Really? Which one is called? I was, I was in it. Uh, I played a very, very small role. It's by Mike Perrone, I guess. He's, um, if you look him up, he's in my, um, friends list on Instagram. He just filmed, um, a new, it's not a documentary. Maybe it is a comment. I don't remember. But it is a movie about the photographer who was basically sexually harassing his models. Mm -hmm. And um, by the end of the day, how they were hunting him in his dreams. Yeah. So it's, it's a very, it's very scary, very interesting and emotional movie. And I can't wait for it to get out. Oh my God, you remembered me. <laughs> yeah, but this movie is coming and it's going to be so good because it's a real problem. There is a lot of communities that are helping models to stay in a good state of mind and, you know, not being sexually harassed because a lot of guys just using beautiful girls. And, and ladies, too. <laughs> and exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies, too. And it's, it's really, really hard because I think still we are women and we are uh we want to be handled with love yeah let's put it that way and sometimes guys just overcross the borders because they think if this girl is beautiful you know that's what you're going to do with her it's like a cliche yeah it is a cliche and it's it's it very and then that's why it's just like certain people i always work i don't work with a lot of photographers so it's usually just me because i can't i can't i'm not responsible for their interactions with other people so whatever they do wrong automatically i'm by association it's like oh no you're you must be bad too you must have the same thoughts i'm like how's like so that's why how's i was that, yeah it's, that's why i keep my distance because you never know and then it'll, sometimes it'll be like falsified but even so just like you just can't take that chance so that's why you always see like other photographers look at photographers like like, like it's <laughs> It's so, it's funny because you've seen it. It's just like, it's like everybody just like giving shade and looking at each other. Like, but models, they're like, yeah, we could be friends or not. But other photographers just yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's Let's very distant. It's like a subtle distance. And it, it, to me, it's funny, but it's, it's understandable. But like, if you're really cool with photographer and then you guys are cool, then yeah, by all means be friends. But that's kind of like also what I want to touch upon is just like other photographers also interacting with other photographers. And then especially when they tell their stories and they're looking at them like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. Why, why, why would you do I, that? <laughs> yeah. I know that feeling. That's uh It's like you're making it, everybody it, else look bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, photographers, you know, it, it's good if you, if you're a girl and your photographer is gay. Yeah. That's just amazing because, you know, you're just like, okay, I'm chill. I'm good now. Because Especially if you never know the photographer. There are a lot of stories of sexual harassment right now in yeah. the fashion world. And it's definitely not safe. And I am very trustful person and I would love to trust everybody I'm dealing with. I just want to believe in good people, but sometimes just you just never know. Sometimes you just make mistakes, and sometimes just you don't know how people are gonna react. Exactly. And when you gonna realize that, oh, oh, this guy is actually not a good one. Sometimes it's just too late. 
Mm. And uh, it's for everybody. You just got to be safe. Like on the streets, you just got to stay safe and out of trouble and keep professional relationship. But if you say that the person is good, there is no need to, you know, to hide this kind of relationship. Just, just be together. Just, you know, have fun. Just be a good friends. But I must admit, there is a lot of models who got married to photographers. So yes, <laughs> this is how it all started. You know, you definitely need to how you meet on a on a shoot somewhere on set. But I guess you don't start being like. Hey, want to go out right after you shot her? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's weird, <laughs> okay. especially if you vibe, because at that point, it's like you know, you don't, you never want to shit what you eat, and it's just like it's always those situations where you might meet that really dope person, you vibe with them, and you're like, well, I can't now because you know because we're yeah. working together, unless exactly. unless they give you the same feedback, and then you, you at that point you have to make a decision, which is like, all right, if we do, that means we can't work together anymore exactly exactly sometimes you're like okay if we're still working together but how we're going to be in a relationship because you really you it's can't. a scary thing to mix relationship and yeah and work process because it's like the same thing you cannot work with your friends exactly Cause it's just it's, it's just scary because you never know how you're going to be- behave and it's just not worth it to ruin your friendship like your childhood friendship for example for some stuff that really doesn't matter by the end of the life. Yeah, Let's especially if they don't like you might be at one place where you like I'm more accepting and then we can move forward past things, but if you have friends that don't that have not been there in their life yet of of learning how to accept things that they can't control, that's when you guys bump heads because they're not there yet and you are and then that's where the collide happens where it's like well, I'm going to do it this way. He's like, I don't want to lose our friendship because you're being so heavy headed. Yeah. You know, so it's like, that's why yeah. I don't really try to work with friends because I was like, let me just leave it at friends because I already had that happen before. And I was like, hey, before we lose anything, let's just end this now. And then that way we can move forward. You know, <laughs> it's like, I, I cherish the friendship. Yeah. I agree with you. I had the same thing and. In- uh, it happened to me a few times that I lost my friends because of the work process. And it, I just realized it happens when you, if you even work together, because first of all, in my company, uh, people who I work with are my good friends. But because I trust them, I believe in them, I want to be with them. And uh, when you actually shoot, you kind of, want to be with somebody that's not going to turn your back but some people just cross this border and they don't see this line between friendship and professional relationship anymore so basically they when you're on set they behave with you like you know they behave like you're nothing or like they can argue with you like you're their friend they can like scream at you they can shout at you but we are in a professional in a professional environment right now. You can do that when we're gonna go outside, and uh, that's gonna be totally fine. But uh, right now, this is not the time. And I had a few moments when we just split on set. We're like, okay, bye. I guess I'll see you never, because that was it. That was the uh, yeah. It doesn't take and too this much. Is, <laughs> exactly, but. It took it took me actually a lot. I took a lot, and it was a few moments when I was just, no, it's fine. We're just for no, it's fine. I understand. No, it's okay. But then there comes a time where you're like, no, it's not okay anymore. We just gotta stop that right yeah. now. Yeah, um, yeah, it's really painful, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it's definitely. It's it's all part of the process. Like I tell people, like you, you know, you, you can always, you know, you have different trial sets that you're like if if you end up make you know working on this task that i give you and everything is cool then that means that we could work and do further projects but if you fail this yeah. first test then i i'm sorry man like i tried yeah <laughs> yeah I really let's stay friends definitely let's be friends let's do that that's for sure that's interesting now now how do you uh deal with self-care in the sense of like, say, for example, like um, you're creative, people have to uh, balance their creativity and 
have a balance of their self care? Like, what what is your self care to kind of keep you moving throughout the day? Do you like paint, swim? Like, what kind of helps oh. contribute? Oh yeah. For me, it's very important. The most important thing for me is to talk to my mom. So every day starts that I wake up, I call my mom on a FaceTime. She's in another country. And I talk to her to start my day because it just makes me happy to see my family, to see, you know, that they are alive and in good health. And if everything is all right there, I know my day is going to be great. Uh, but definitely, I... I'm going to be honest with you. I never meditated in my life. I hate meditation. I'm Aries. I'm like, I hate, I, I love cannot. Aries. They're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just can't see it on the same place. It's really, it's really a challenge for me. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to stay home for a month or even more, and I want to be in a good state of mind, I really start, you know, processing and, processing my life and realizing what goes wrong, what can't go past the wrong, kind of put positive vibes. So I started meditating. I started like going on my rooftop and exercising and getting all this bad thought out of me and calling my friends on the FaceTime all the time and reading books and uh, yeah, just staying in this kind of Everything is okay. It's going to be fine. You know, <laughs> I'm going to survive. <laughs> but of course, of course, every meditation of mine finishes with me crying, tears. Is that how just, meditation works? Because I never really tried it. Like, I, I don't know if I can get that emotionally <laughs> vulnerable. <laughs> but, <laughs> I didn't know if it's the right way of doing it. But one of my amazing teachers um, in New York Home Academy said once, you got to love to tear. Your day is complete. If you complete three things. You laugh to tears, you cry, and you have an orgasm. This is three things. <laughs> that is basically what your body needs every day. This like emotional range, yeah, to keep your your mind healthy. Yeah, yeah. And I will never forget that. So every time I'm crying, I'm like Sassy, remember what your teacher said. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> it's, <laughs> to it's cry. So- it's- Yep, it's yeah, okay it's to cry. To it's absolutely okay to cry. And I, I try to enforce that more so in like in the male community because it's just like, oh, we're supposed to be tough and rub some dirt on it. And like, it's, it's like, that's not <laughs> the best approach to, because you got to, you know, eventually in life, you know, if you have kids, you got to teach them how to be vulnerable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not always solely on the woman's job to be compassionate and show like it's also you should have a balance on both ends you know what i'm saying so that way they understand like yes it's okay to be you know uh vulnerable it doesn't mean that you're gonna be demasculated if you tear and you cry or whatnot like yeah everybody has a moment in their life like i remember one time my grandma had passed away and i was like the first time i see my uncle cry and i was just like whoa (laughs) It was it was tough because because I at that very moment that was years ago it was like oh it's it's not not that it was like oh it's okay but it was just like it, it it's acceptable like there's no no one's gonna come at your life and be yeah. like oh you can't cry like why is why is it Ex- yeah. exactly yeah there is no such a thing like if you're a guy you know if you're a dude you cannot cry this is like you're a man no like we all can have emotions and it's totally fine to have tears because it's just emotions if we look at it that way and i think that vulnerability in people is the most beautiful thing in the world when you look somebody in the eye and you really see those emotions coming out and somebody's open-hearted to you i think it's just i think it's just beautiful yeah, yeah absolutely definitely yep so yeah. what what's your plans? Oh my god! <laughs> I know, right? You got the, Every, the emotions. like my 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 grandmother just joined our really. Oh, we gave her a <laughs> yeah. show. Let me tell you, I don't know if she just came in, but 
when she watches from the beginning, it's going to be a beautiful session that she gets to witness. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> But yeah, I want to I want to thank you again for actually coming on this session and hopefully when things like dial down, we actually I don't know, you're based in New York, right? Yep, I am based in New York. Yeah, so maybe we could like work on a project collab and something. Yeah, of course, know? I'd love that. I'd love that definitely. Yeah, definitely let's stay in touch and thank you. I appreciate it. thank you for having me. It, it was an honor and you know, it's really nice what you're doing right now. I see your live sessions with different people and I hope you're going to keep doing that because that's all we need right now to, to know some fun and interesting stories and get our mind out of quarantine. Absolutely. Definitely. Cause I, I want, I want people to actually showcase who they are and let the world know like, yo, you know, we all are on the same boat and we're all, you know, we're all yep. creatives in our own way. So let's all link yep. hands socially <laughs> and, yep, please. And, and, you know, enjoy, enjoy life. But yeah, there's going to be more shows. I'm going to have a couple more this week and next week. So definitely stay tuned Perfect. and then we'll definitely yeah, keep definitely. in touch. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. It was nice talking to you. Have a good one. Have a good Bye-bye. one. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody, that was the end of the Coffee and Critique with Stacey. Uh, we'll be back again uh, tonight, actually, at 8 o'clock. So uh, stay tuned and enjoy the rest of your day.